Once we have our title in place, we will include subtitles for our data. This gives us clarity and ensures that our data is actually meaningful. For our example, we are going to analyze company sales by month and by salesperson. Okay, and again, in this case, we're just using one quarter. And if we want to bold and center, that's all we have to do. And this is going to be a very, very simple example because we don't want to get too technical. Um, we will do a little more detailed at the end. Um, this data is really nice and simple just for the purposes of ensuring we get an, a real live example. Um, again, this is entered in table format. Personally, I would never enter data in table. It's usually at this point you have limited analysis options. However, I just want to focus on the abilities of Excel. Um, we'll show you some true data input and manipulation in a later segment. And again, I'll point out this is a very rudimentary example. Um, I would, again, never use this table if I haven't mentioned that. Um, again, I think it's worth repeating. So this is not the best way to enter data. This is just one way to enter data. So as I mentioned, tables set up in this way have very limited use. They literally don't offer much room for analysis other than sort of trends, things like that. And again, to get more complicated, we could use a larger data set. Um, but again, this is small, it's manageable, it all fits on one screen. And so I can demonstrate the features. We'll get to a more complicated example near the end. Now, we've used our salesperson in the first three months as our column headers. And we also have a total for each salesperson and a total per month. And these are units sold. So we may want to make our heading very specific. Now these numbers, they're just random numbers I've created. So at this point, we can take a closer look at our text formatting. And in a little bit, we'll talk about using sequences as well as adding sums. Now, this is purely cosmetic. If you know that the people who access this spreadsheet will be accessing it either in Excel or in a color PDF or in printed in color, you can use color to differentiate. So for example, we're gonna color that. Uh, let's make it a nice dark color. So we're gonna color salesperson B so that somebody looking at this list quickly sees this is one again it's more of a visual thing and it's really some people if they have long lists they like to have every second line highlighted uh, one thing i will warn you is if somebody is going to print this in black and white literally you may as well get a black marker and color over it because it will come out fairly dark uh, one way you can get around it so this is the color fill and you can select from standard colors or you can pop up the color wheel, move it around and, and pick your own color. And here we have the font color. So if you've got a dark font, you may want to have a white or sorry, a dark background. You may want to have a white font. Again, I would do this only if I knew with certainty that the person reviewing it would print it in color or view it on a screen. Just a minor little thing. Um, it looks pretty, but when it comes to printing, it's not actually functional. Um, the data should speak for itself regardless of coloring. I just sometimes, if you like the cosmetics of it, if you've checked the spreadsheet, you're happy with it, you think it enhances readability, by all means, play with the coloring a little. So we've got different colors here. In the next section, I'm going to show you how to format the cells.